unfortunately, uh, many, many thousands and thousands of years ago, mankind began searching the heavens for wisdom and knowledge. And like Mr. Hall said, they weren't looking to learn about. They were looking into the heavens to learn from the stars. They were looking at the stars and the, and the constellations and the, and the sun and the moon and trying to uh, figure out where did these things come from. And that was the beginnings. And then for thousands of years, mankind has only been a handful, not all of mankind. The overwhelming majority of mankind are still on skateboards and watching, uh, you know, watching beavers and butthead. But there has been always in the history of mankind, there have always been those who were born into this world to become geniuses. They become brilliant minds because they study. When everybody else is out drinking and partying, they are researching and studying into the late hours of night and the early mornings. They're in universities reading, studying, calculating, understanding the words, the terms, where things have come from. And they become our great teachers, of which 90% of the people will never hear anything about because nobody seems to care about that kind of wisdom and knowledge. And so I've, I realized that a long time ago, and boy do I realize it now, that I have spent my entire life studying in university libraries uh, on my own, just sitting and reading and reading and reading and cross-referencing and cross-pollinating uh, uh, ideas and concepts with something that was said you know, 5,000 years ago by the Babylonians, and now today we're saying the same identical thing, but we just don't know it. And so I, I've, I've decided that uh, the world of mankind is totally ill-informed and unread about the real history of the world that you live in. The history of this earth itself is staggering if you have the intellectual acumen to understand the uh, the perimeters of our history we we have artifacts which are known to be handmade artifacts which are found in the earth in such a de uh, in such a depth in the earth that all the paleontologists and archaeologists all agree that at that depth that far down into the earth the strata is at least three to three and a half billion, with a B, three and a half billion years old strata going way down into the earth, as further as we can go. You're digging into the earth that's three and a half billion years old, and yet we're finding handmade artifacts, strange and profoundly brilliant stuff. We're bringing up all kinds of handmade uh, 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 metals and rings and jewelry and, uh, and, and some of it having writings that we don't even relate to. And so it implies that there has been an intelligent people or intelligent life. I don't know what they were three billion years ago. But somebody was here three billion years ago because the handmade artifacts are now on display, which were dug out of uh, uh, strata, which is three and a half billion years old. So try and wrap your head around that. Try and wrap your mind around that. That life on this earth, intelligent life, and I do mean extraordinarily intelligent life, has been on this earth for three and a half billion years ago. Three and a half billion years ago, there was highly intelligent creatures on this earth. I don't know if they look like us, but I do know that they're, according to the science of today, we are now finding handmade artifacts in the oceans or beneath the oceans when they're drilling for oil. They hit the bottom of the ocean and they drill into the bottom, uh, they drill into the floor of the ocean. And as they're pumping it up, as the stuff comes up, they're finding handmade artifacts which are under the ocean floor. We have uh, pyramids the size of the Great Pyramid of Egypt on the Atlantic 
uh, on the Atlantic Ocean floor, 10 miles north of the, of the island of Bimini, in an area called the Bahama Banks, is an enormous pyramid sitting on the ocean floor. And how many people know that? And better still, how many people even care? But you better care because there's something going on on this earth that we haven't been told. And the reason why is because the people who are given this knowledge and are, have know about it and are looking at this kind of esoteric knowledge, it's a big club and you ain't in it. Right. This is oh. what George Carlin was talking about when you find out how much you have not been told because you are masters who believe that they own you. They have, con they have actually framed mischief by law. They have actually created laws among themselves. And those laws that they created say that they own all the poor working class people of the world. They own your body and they put you on their stock market. And so the people who run this planet are not about to tell you nothing. They don't figure you're smart enough to understand it, and you're just getting in the way anyway, because with your IQ, you wouldn't understand it anyway, and that's not what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to crawl on your knees and pay your rent and go out and enjoy your beer and your pretzels and your, and your ball games and your football and your tennis ball games and go out and play games with a ball and stay out of the way of the people who run this planet. Right. The Rockefellers don't care a damn about you or your family or the Rothschilds or any of the other international banking elite or the people who are the real powers behind the governments of this world. Don't ever think that the President of the United States is the most powerful man uh, in this country. He is not. He merely represents. He's a president of a company. He's not the owner of the company. Right. You better go back and find out where your country came from and who was running this planet behind your back that is, prefer that is keeping you ignorant, ill-informed, and unread so that they can easily manipulate you into doing whatever they want you to do. So you're only good for one thing. If they need you in a war, they need some warm bodies to send over in a war, good. War is good for business, so you need to invest your son. So I'm just saying that if you wake up and find out that the world you live in is not being created by the God you thought was around you and thought that you, you know, God loves you, and then you find out you don't even know what the word God means. Yeah. And when you look at this word, uh, Sirius, the dog star, uh, first of all, this is where we get our word sir. So in the military, and when I was growing up in the South, I always learned to, when talking to adults, with yes ma'am and yes sir. Sir, S-I-R, comes from Sirius. So therefore the pharaohs of Egypt were said to have come from Sirius. Yes sir, no sir, military. And so there is a whole militaristic presence on the earth, which I have talked about before, where all the armies of the world always march the same. The goose step is the same with the Nazis or with all the other uh, countries of the world. All the nations of the world have armies, navies. They have, uh, they have the merchant marines. They all salute the same way. They all wear same insignias, insignias. They, all the militaries of the world operate the same behind the scenes. My God, you need to wake up and find out your world is run by people you have no idea in the world who really is the power of America behind the scenes. Just as we look at the Roman Empire, we see Caesar, and we hear about the great Caesars of Rome, never realizing the Caesars were not the boss in Rome. The money is the boss in Rome. Right. The people with the money decided what the Caesar will do and what he won't do. The bankers. And now you're talking about behind the Caesars of Rome. You're talking about Arius Copernicus Pisos. P-I-C-O-S. Look it up for a change and realize Caesar merely was on his knees to his monetary masters. 
the Pisos people and the Flavians. And when you begin to see the, the real powers behind the Roman Empire were banking demonic depravity banking families. And they, they control the Roman people through religion, alcohol, drugs, sex, international uh, competitions of games. And my God, when you understand how this earth is actually run and who owns it and how they control it and then how your government works. And you got two, you got two parties, Democrats and Republicans in America. And we call them left wing and right wing. Why do we call the two parties left wing and right wing? That's because a, uh, uh, an eagle only has two wings. That's why the American eagle, the ball eagles on the American $1 bill. If you look on the back of a $1 bill, you'll see an eagle with two wings, left wing and right wing. And you will see he has nine tail feathers, which is the council of nine. Most people have never heard of the Council of Nine, but you better go back and start doing some homework and find out the secret societies that founded this country and that financed this, this country's wars throughout the world and who they really are and what you are doing here. Because you don't know from a, you have no idea in the world where this world has come from where it is now and get ready because it's going to go where it was already designed to go.